First, their sharp blades, then shielding lubrication and cooling. Brr. With lubrication before and after the blades. Shields and cools while you shave. Pro Shield Chill from Gillette. Greetings and welcome inside historic Callahan Off. The Titans look to get on track just in time for the holidays. No secret that Detroit has struggled mightily this season, losing nine in a row after an opening win over Adrian College. But they have been playing better as of late and have led at halftime in the past four games. As I bring in former Titan great, the legend himself, Earl Kierton. Always good to see you. <laughs> you too. Earl, what can Coach Alexander get this team to do to carry over that first half success to a full 40 minutes? Well, you know, having trouble, and, and McCarty knew coming in here, you know, losing Paris Bass last year and, you know, lose, losing uh, Carl Brundage, you know, as well as Wilson. That's almost 45 points a year scoring coming in, and Corey Allen, a young, good freshman. They're playing halves, and they're showing flashes. I uh, changed the concept. Won't be more of a defensive-oriented team now. So it's a work in progress. He's put together some solid halves. Eastern Michigan was a great game, the last one we did here at home. And they were right in the ball game until, you know, until the half. And then they got to figure out a way to get 40 minutes of basketball. That's going to be consistency. They have to duplicate what they do early in the ball games and be ready to perform throughout the whole game because we know it all it lasts 40 minutes every Absolutely. night. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, Nolan Richardson said it best, 40 minutes of hell. Now, listen, this Titans team, Earl, has been around the country. They played at Florida State. They played Illinois. Mm -hmm. But nothing like Western Kentucky. Seven <laughs> games in a row on the <laughs> road, 10,000 miles. What can the Titans do to maybe kind of – put that last leg out underneath Western Kentucky. Well, you know, I was asking who did that schedule, and they said the former coach <laughs> former coach yeah. put that together. He's gone now, and these guys have been on the road for 10,000 miles traveling. They just left the West Coast to come to the East Coast to play a game. Seven games, only won one game. But, but, you know, they'll come out and they'll compete. They'll be back home 29 days in between home games. That's unbelievable. But, you know, the team's out here, and they, they're in a similar situation. And, you know, a lot of guys transfer in this year, a new coach, a whole new thing that's going on for them. So this should be interesting this afternoon it to see how these teams should, match Earl. up. And, and, yeah. I'll, and I'll say this, you know, Coach Alexander talking to me before the game, he splits this season into three thirds. This is the second third. There's zero at zero. The yeah. one and nine kind of goes out the window. The team's got to forget about that, don't they? Exactly. You got to keep pushing, keep working. Every day is a day that you work to try to get things better. All right, Titans in the white jerseys, red trim. It'll be Jenkins, Allen, Deshaun Ray Black, Cole Long, Gerald Blackshear. The starting lineup for Detroit, it'll be Tobias Harris, Jr. Lamoba, Pancake Thomas, we'll get to that in a minute, Justin Johnson, and Q Johnson for Western Kentucky. We are underway. Happy holidays to one and all. Happy holidays to you and yours, Earl. Same to you, Dan. Nothing like some great college <laughs> basketball in time for the holidays. You know, the Titans like to reward their fans with a, a victory here after losing nine straight after an opening win over Adrian. But it's an easy basket for a guy that everyone's looking at right now. Uh, when you look at Justin Johnson, he's got size and speed. Well, he's a strong post-up player inside as well. He can knock down the outside shot. And that time, he was able to post up underneath and went up strong to dunk the basketball. He can be a handful. They're going to have to play close attention to him this afternoon. Here's Chris Jenkins talking to him before the game. He's not happy. He's leading the team in 11 and, with 11 and almost seven rebounds a game, but not where he wants to be. Is a nice entry pass to Blackshear who draws the foul. I know Chris Jenkins expects better out of himself, doesn't he? Well, he's a senior this year, and, you know, with the you know record the way it is right now, they're one and nine, and, he you know, he was ex expectations were a little bit higher, not playing the way he wants to play, but he's a competitor, and I'm sure, you know, by the time the Horizon League start, Chris is going to find his way and we'll see some solid play out of him throughout the rest of the season. Jenkins 11.7 and 6.6 .6 boards as Blackshear makes the first free throw. Blackshear gets the start tonight. He has started a couple games but no Jaleel Hogan to come off the bench. Well you know he's an active body in the lineup. He'll look to attack the boards. You know a couple games both of those guys have been out on the floor together but you know I guess Blackshear's having it's probably his best season from last year. You know bashed his career high at 12 points last game and uh, he, he's an active live body out there that will rebound and block shots for you. Blackshear makes both frees. Those is shooting at 46% on the season. We're tied at two just underway here. Callahan Hall great to have you worldwide on ESPN 3 and locally here on WADL. We got a foul in the post. Let's see if they call it on Jenkins. Either way it will be the first foul of this game. And they're going to give it on Blackshear. It'll be his first there. But, you know, I like seeing Gerald Blackshear get at it, especially early. He's shown that on the road sometimes this year, Earl, where he's not afraid to back down anybody. Well, he's a solid 6'9". He's added some weight to that frame this year. And uh, 
You know, he, he's something to look for in the future. I think this year is going to help him a whole lot. Uh, he's getting a lot of playing time, getting the start and experience, and you know, he's going to be a guy that's going to be able to step it up and be really important for the Titans down the stretch. Titans tuning up the defense there. A couple taps, but the ball state goes out of bounds. It'll stay with Western Kentucky. I like seeing the active hands early here, though. Well, defense is uh, Bacardi Alexander's signature, and he wants this team to, to work on that each and every day, and we know it takes time to develop to become a good defensive team. And yeah, they forced the turnover there. Remember, Bakari just interrupted the press conference and said, listen, you guys can be creative on offense, but if you don't listen to me and do what you're supposed to do on defense, you're coming out of the game. Good start for them defensively today. Exactly. He wants to set that tone, and, and I'm sure you're going to see that in his recruiting. He's going to bring players in here that can go both ways and play both defense and offense. He knows games are won at the defensive end of the floor. That's what he was, and that's what he want to bring to Titan territory. Here's Cole Long, little turnaround jumper is good, and Cole Long getting a surprise start. The Newfoundland, uh, Newfoundland's own, so the Titans are the 4-2 leader. Well, he came into UAD with a reputation of being a great outside shooter. Hasn't had a chance to display that so far this year, but I'm sure we're going to see some of that out of him, getting a start and trying to get his confidence level up. And another turnover, two so far, and that one caused by some good pressure. Corey Allen past the timeline, picks it, pops the three, slips flash. He's taking a bath. Corey Allen for three. Tell you what, Corey's a confident rookie. You know, 18 points against Eastern Michigan, freshman of the, of the, of the month. Uh, you know, Corey, you can look for some special things out of him. He has been one bright spot for these Titans this year. And it's a 30-second timeout, so we'll stick right here. Earl, a 5-0 spurt for the Titans here. And this is exactly the kind of start you want to see for a team that's lost nine straight. Of course, as we mentioned, they played much better in the first half. You go back to the last few games, and Murray State had a lead at halftime. And Toledo had a lead at halftime. Bowling Green lead at halftime. Eastern Michigan lead at halftime. But just couldn't keep it going in the second half. Is today the day they can finally get that done? Well, I'm sure that's what the goal is. You know, I'm sure he's stressing that, you know, every day talking about 40 minutes of basketball. With the exception of not guarding uh, Justin Johnson on the opening play of this game, the Titans have been solid defensively right now, and that reflects why they lead 7-2. to two. All right, 7-2, the score with 18.05 left. And as we lead off here, Jaleel Hogan on the bench, of course, normally a starter or a Horizon League type player, but Matt Grant still out uh, with academic issues. Aaron Foster Smith not playing today. Either is Gerard Williams. We have not been apprised as to why, but he will not be playing today either. A lot of action in the post. Finally, a foul, foul call. It might give it to Cole Long here as Justin Johnson, who's going to be a beast in the post today, Earl. The Titans have got to contain as a second team following the first on Cole Long. Well, he'll post up strong down low. He can, like I said, he also is capable of taking the outside shot. And, you know, Jaleel Hogan is a guy that you don't want to get in early foul trouble either. And, uh, you know, probably part of the strategy would be is, you know, to, to keep him so he could be fresh down the second half of the basketball game and not let him pick up those early fouls in, in the first half of the game. And Jaleel's important. He's been probably most a consistent scorer for the Titans this year. And you, you know, you really need him in those last 20 minutes of a ball game. Absolutely. Johnson makes a pair of 68% free throw shooter on the season. The team as a whole, Western Kentucky, 70%. Titans come in shooting just 62% of the team. They've got to get better on that. Pick and pop from Al, no good. And it's rebounded by Johnson. Here comes Western Kentucky trailing by three. And he picks and pops. And that's short tapped around. And the Kentucky, Western Kentucky Hilltoppers will get another chance here in the offensive set. And that was Pancake Thomas who couldn't get it to go. And we're told the guy likes flapjacks, Earl. <laughs> it's his nickname. It's his name since birth, well, actually. His name, name is Pancake. But I tell you what, Pancake can put some points on the board. You know, he's one of the main players here for Western Kentucky. He can really shoot the basketball to go along with that guy that just knocked that yep. down. Q Johnson, a local product here from Pontiac, Michigan. But this is their leading score for the Hilltoppers this year. And he really can shoot the basketball from the outside. Wide open three by Johnson. And after a 5-0 Titan spurt, it's a 5-0 Hilltopper spurt. I wonder if this team, how weary they've been. They've gone home a few times during this ridiculous 10,000 mile, seven consecutive road game trip. But, you know, they're traveling here in snow. It's not very warm. And this is where the Titans might get a chance to get a home win here. It's Jenkins can't get it to go. Rebounded by the Hilltoppers in Lomboba. A lot of bonding. Anytime a team's on the road this long, they really become close. It's no question about that. I was talking to some of the uh, Hilltoppers staffers, and they said the biggest word they could use is discovery of this road trip. Mm. They definitely discover each other right. in many ways. And a right wing three is short by Tobias Howard. They call him TJ. Here come the Titans back the other way. Allen looks to work with it. Both teams in a straight man-to-man -man so far today, and that triple is short by Black. And here come the Hilltoppers. So both teams started off hot, and now they've cooled out a little bit. And Johnson just walking in unimpeded. Can't get that one to go, and here come the Titans the other way. Cole Long bringing the ball up. 
picked up by Lamoba, and a nice pass inside to Blackshear, who scores it and draws the foul. This is what the Titans have not been able to do enough so far this season. And I tell you what, Cole Long looked really comfortable that time. He's starting to, you know, get a feel. It's, it's a good thing you can get some of your young players some experience. You know, you got to try different lineups and different pe people every night, but at the same time, you want to develop some of your young talent. And Cole Long is definitely a guy that's going to be part of the future for the Titans. Both teams, some moments in this game so far. Titans lead it by 2-9 to 7 with 15.53 left in the first. You're watching Titans basketball on ESPN3 and WADL. Toyota Thon is 50 states big. The best number is 8000 Up to $8,000 off your favorite Toyotas with Toyota Thon bonus cash above all other incentives. But it's all over January 3rd. 24 7 at BeamToyota.com. Downtown on Broadway. What are you doing here? Who are you? Imagine the secrets this guy has. If you go down this road, you can't go back. Are you seeing this? That's gonna make these people laugh. A little different than you expected, huh? Dan Lee Drew Kirton back here inside Cal and all the Titans and Western Kentucky have exchanged 5 0 runs. Now the Titans have Scored the last two to make it a 9-7 to seven game, and I like the intensity so far. Well, this is a game that Detroit's got to come out and impose their will early. Oh, there's no question, and uh, you see Western Kentucky just entered Lawson, a 7-2 you know, center that they have that's coming off their bench that's effective, a good shot blocker that just entered the game. Yeah, Ben Lawson, 7-1 from Hitchin, England, another turnover, third of the game. For Western Kentucky, the Titans defense really helped so far. Detroit comes in one and nine on the year. They've lost nine straight after the opening win against Adrian College here in November. Western Kentucky four and six on the season last year went to the Conference USA semifinal. Returned three players, but have a lot of new faces here, and they've had a lot of time to get acquainted on this long road trip. Here's Blackshear, a little fake move. Can't get it to go against his own board. And he spins and tries to get it again, and once again misses this time. Lawson comes down yeah. with it. As I just mentioned, you know, Lawson's a shot blocker, and, uh, you know, he's no, he's a presence down there in the middle, and right there showing his ability to block shots, and on the other end, post up and slam dunk right underneath the basket. So he's, you know, he's a, he's a handful coming off the bench for Looks like sure. vintage Earl Kieran, if you ask me. <laughs> and a nice move by Lawson, ties the game at nine. Here's CJ Chris Jenkins. As you have Matt Marty Lee in the game for the first time. He's from Australia, so you got an Australian and an Englishman on this Western Kentucky team. What do they think of living in the western part of Kentucky? Jenkins can't get it to go and almost fluttered out of bounds, but it's in the hands of Pancake Thomas, given that name by his grandma when he was born. So he stuck with it. Who doesn't like flapjacks? <laughs> and he, he's a pretty good player, too, so he can, he can call whatever he wants. No, no question about it. He's one of the, the top scorers on this team. Johnson can't get it to go, and Jenkins back the other way for Detroit. Great to have you with us here on a beautiful Saturday afternoon in Detroit. I say beautiful because there's snow everywhere. <laughs> Not very warm, Earl, but it's still beautiful. And Jenkins finds it off the glass, but it, it's cleaned up by Jaleel Hogan, who's in for the first time. They didn't get the start. Normally does, Earl, but for a violation of team rules, is coming off the bench today. Well, one of their most consistent players, I tell you, Jaleel will get on the offensive boards. He's a strong presence underneath the basket and right away making his impact felt when he entered the ball game. Pancake Johnson tries to put some syrup on that one and now takes the triple, and that's nothing but net pancake. Cuts it in half and slurps it up, my friend. Well, he's an excellent outside shooter, and, and if you don't have a hand up and pay attention to him, he's not, and he's not shy with the basketball. He'll definitely take those shots from the outside, so you have to be on him. Hilltoppers first lead since the early stage of the game, and the Titans miss another in easy basket there. Rebound on Boba. And this is a dangerous time for Detroit. They've got to reestablish their will they had early in this game. That's two cracks at it, and the second one was good for Lamomba. So it's 14 to 11. Titans led by three from Corey Allen and four from Gerald Blackshear so far. Here is Dre Black, and he's going to get called for a travel. That'll be the Titans' first turnover. Western Kentucky already with three. We got some wholesale changes here for both teams. As We'll see Josh McFoley for the first time today, along with Jenkins and Cole Long back in, and we'll see Howard come back in for Tobias Howard, that is the freshman from Lithonia, Georgia, for Rick Stansberry's team. And you know, Earl Rick Stansberry, longtime Mississippi State 
inherited a team that was kind of underachieving and a little scandal at the end of last year where they had to have their coach uh, not be, re re you know, re-sign re contract-wise. He brings a lot of experience to a team that has a lot of good history. Mississippi State, he's been around for quite a while. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of time. He's a winner everywhere he goes and done a great de job down in Mississippi State, and they look for the same thing here. Um, with Western Kentucky. Pancake Thomas nails another three, but Hogan finds a way into the lane and gets it to go. 17 to 13, but Western Kentucky looks like the more agile team in the last couple minutes here. Here's Howard past the timeline, very dangerous point guard. The Hilltoppers have tried to do a three guard lineup. It hasn't worked the way they wanted it to, so mixing and matching it. Another triple by Pancake Thomas. That one is too strong, but we're gonna get a foul in the post. I believe they're gonna call it on Hogan there. One of the things that, you know, has really been a detriment to what is a very talented player in Jaleel Hogan Earl is a lot of offensive fouls or fouls on, on, on the defensive end for him. But following the, the offensive players from the opposing team, he's got to get better at that. Well, he's, you know, he's a wide body. He's usually undersides. Uh, you know, his, his width is, is what his advantage is. And sometimes, like right now, you know, at six foot five, six six, he's giving up a lot of inches to a 7'2 guy out there on the floor. And King Thomas just rising and firing. Now it's... 4-3 attempted in the last five possessions, and it falls short. 17-13, here's Jenkins. As I mentioned, talked to him before the ball game. He is not happy with how he's played this year. He knows he can do better. He's the senior leader, and maybe this is a game where he can really kind of break out. Here's Hogan, backing in the post on Lawson. They'll call Lawson for the foul, his first, and that'll be Western Kentucky second, and bring us to the under-12 timeouts. So both teams trying to establish their will here, Earl. The Kentucky Hilltoppers leading it by 4, 17-13. You're watching Titans basketball on ESPN3 and WADL. With the Xfinity TV app, anything with a screen is a TV. Stream 130 live channels, plus 40,000 on-demand TV shows and movies, all on the go. You can even download from your X1 DVR and watch it offline. Only Xfinity gives you more to stream to any screen. Download the Xfinity TV app today. With the Xfinity TV app, anything with a screen is a TV. Stream 130 live channels, plus 40,000 on-demand TV shows and movies, all on the go. You can even download from your X1 DVR and watch it offline. Only Xfinity gives you more to stream to any screen. Download the Xfinity TV app today. Daily Drill Kirtan back here at Callahan Hall. You take a look at Jaleel Hogan using his body there, and that's what you love to see if you're Coach Alexander, you see. Well, he stays on the offensive boards. Right here, you can see him with the nice little soft touch underneath the basket. And, you know, Jaleel, like you mentioned, he picks up fouls, but the guy just kind of fell down as soon as he caught the basketball, and the fish was not buying that one. And he was able to lay that one in nice and soft. Yep, they call him Jalethal. Four <laughs> points for him and Blackshear to lead the Titans six for Pancake Thomas on two of four shooting from downtown as we come back here. Great to have you with us. So we're approaching the holiday season, one of my favorite times of the year, and a great time to be with my good friend Earl Kiernan and the Titan legend. And there is Corey Allen slicing and dicing, and that's what he does best. Showing his ability to score the basketball. He can not only shoot the jump shot, he's able to put it on the floor and get to the basket, and that time attacking and get in for an easy layup. Titan shooting 35.7%, another turnover, fourth in the game, and Allen wants to take it himself, throws it up. Oh, and they're going to call the late foul there. It looked like he was bodied at the end there, but Allen really showing that aggression could pay off. Well, doing it on both ends. You see him come down, make the nice move to the basket for the layup, and then a steal and get out in transition, a swipe right across his arm at the last minute. He's able to draw the foul. Opportunity for two at the free throw line. I'll bring the young freshman who was a phenomenal player at Ypsilanti High School to the free throw line. So far on the season, Allen, 78%, best on the squad, but misses the first. There's the announcer's jinx. We haven't had a chance to do that in a little <laughs> while, Earl. Titans are shooting to 62% as a team from the line. I know Coach Alexander really stressing that's got to get better. Well, Corey, Corey Allen definitely is going to be a bright spot for them as he knocks down that second free throw. I didn't want to talk about that while he was shooting. <laughs> so he was able to knock that one down, and he's definitely been a bright spot for these Titans uh, this year so far. Titans out-rebounded right now 11-9, to nine, shooting 35%. 
Western Kentucky 37%. And a nice move in the lane, but it's short there by Q Johnson, but they clean it up. And you know, this Western Kentucky team is pretty solid at second chance opportunities. But Jaleel Hogan right back down the other way says, no thank you, sir, I want another. No, they have a lot of athletes uh, on the Western Kentucky team, but yeah, it's a team that's still trying to find themselves. A lot of new players, a lot of new faces mixed with some young guys and some, and some fifth year seniors. So it's gonna take them time. I think they're probably better than what their record indicate right now. Four and six, but have been on the road forever. They come off a, a really bad loss to St. Mary's and yet another turnover. The Titans defense turning out they lost 73 to 51 a few days back out in California and talking to Coach Stansberry. Uh, they, they said that St. Mary's team pretty damn tough. <laughs> St. Mary's solid program. Keeps some good players down there every year. In state tournament, every year you oh, yeah. see them around. So they, they, they're a team that, that'll be there in March. Great home court advantage. West Coast Conference. They host the tournament a lot. There's Hogan. Nice oh. slip move. Can't get it to go. And that was that was unlucky for Julio Hogan. A great move by him. A little bit of Elijah one that time. <laughs> yeah. And there, a guy used to play with. There's Howard yeah. missing the triple. And McFowley right back the other way. Pick and pop. And that's too strong, but Hogan gets the board. He fires it up. Will it fall in? No. But yet another Jaleel Hogan move that causes the team, you know, the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers to follow him. Well, you got to love his consistency. He bangs. He goes after every offensive rebound. His size and his presence down there means a lot for the Titans. And he's been there so far every game for them this year. Yeah. Earl, you can't stress enough how hard this kid works. His free throw percentage only at 47%, but he really spent so much time trying to improve on that. And that's the area that, you know, he really needs to improve because he's going to find himself there a lot. You know, with his size and body, he draws the contact and he gets fouled all the time. So he's got to be rewarded for that. And that's something that can add another five or six points to his game if he, you know, started knocking those free throws down. LaMama well, back in for Western Kentucky. The game is tied. The Titans on a 6-2 run here after trailing by four. One more coming for Jalethal, and he can't get that one to go. One and two ain't bad, but it's not as good as Meatloaf to say two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> He does work at it, and that's something that's always impressed me. He knows he's got to get better because they'll follow him late in game situations. Here's LaMamba against Josh McFowley. We're tied at 19. We're in for a good one here. Johnson thought about the three, instead moves for the mid-ranger and gets it to go. Well, Johnson's with a little bit of home court advantage. A lot of people drove down from Pontiac. We can hear them behind us uh, cheering him on. And right like that, down the other way is McFowley in the tight. So far today, Earl, whenever Western Kentucky has scored, they've come right back down a few times today and answered the basket. Well, McFowley is, uh, you know, the, the Titans' leading scorer, and, he, and he's proven. He had a 25-point game earlier this year and 17, 18-point game. He's capable of putting points in the basket, and that's what they look for him to do. And an offensive foul there. Good position by Chris Jenkins. And they will call it on Q Johnson, and that'll be his first and the team's sixth. Well, you can see, you know, some of the defensive concepts that, uh, you know, that, that Coach McCarty Alexander has been instilling in this team. You can see it, you know, working out on the court, you know, in spots. And you want to get consistency out of that. You see them taking the charges. You see them getting solid stops. And that's something you want to try to do for 40 minutes of basketball. And that's something Bakari has preached for talking to them before the game. And, you know, he's not, no one can be happy with a nine-game losing streak. But he has seen things change as McFowley runs down the lane, can't get it to go. They are happy with what they've done the last four or five games. Or it is about building, isn't it? Well, when you're losing, you have to take the positives out of it. And it has been some positives, even the fact that they're one and nine right now. You see some positive things that you can build on. Q Johnson fan section behind us uh, from Pontiac. Excited on that triple in Western Kentucky. So far today, four of nine from downtown. They lead it by three. So back and forth we go here. McFowley in the forecourt for Detroit. Gets it over to CJ. He fires a right wing three. Splish splash. He's taking a bath. Maybe that gets CJ off offensively early. Well, that's the shot we used to seeing him knock down. Uh, you know, he's usually does the consistency. Uh, been a little short with it early this season, but he's looking for that to come, and I'm sure it's going to come for him. And a travel. That's turnover number six for Western Kentucky. The Titans have just one turnover. Detroit has scored five points so far off of Western Kentucky turnovers. That's something to continue to watch, Earl. Well, the Titans make it tough for non-conference teams coming into Callahan Hall. Uh, you know, winning percentage is way up there, and they you get you know, too many teams coming here out of conference and able to defeat the Titans in their own building. So here's a perfect opportunity this afternoon for them to, to get a win. The Titans are very, very tough here at Callahan. Not as much this year, but haven't played here much this year, but they've had some very tough battles at Callahan. As Hogan wants a mid-ranger, misses everything. As you mentioned, McFowley leading the team at 13 a game. So is Jaleel Hogan. And Jenkins right there at 11.7 points a game. The top three. Almost another turnover. Let's see what they call here. Oh, they're going to call it 
a foul on Allen. I like the aggressive play there. And the Titans have decided that today's the day they're going to come out and not, you know, save this for later in the game. Well, you got to like the way that uh, Allen sacrificed his body that time, diving down there, not afraid to get dirty, and went after a loose ball. Unfortunately, he, you know, he received a foul. All right, what a game so far. We're dotted at 24. As you see Allen try to get the go there. Well, you see the hustle. You see him getting down right there. And, you know, that, that could have went either way right there. And, unfortunately, the referee called him you know, for the foul, diving for the basketball. All right, good basketball going on here. Cal and all. It's 24-all. You're watching Detroit Titans basketball on ESPN3 and WADL. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Gerald Kiernan back here courtside, Cal, and all we're locked in a battle here. You see 24 all. Both teams have had solid moments so far. Let's see who can finish the first half the strongest. Here's Pancake Johnson over to the other Johnson, Justin. A lot of Johnsons on the court today. Now Lamoba, or Lamamba, excuse me, over to Pancake, who's been firing threes all day. Can't get that one to go, and the Titans get the rebound with Jaleel Hogan out there with McFowley, Jenkins, Corey Allen, and Cole Long, the Newfoundland. Newfoundland's own. Let's see a different look here by uh, Western Kentucky as they go into a zone defense against the Titans. And Corey Allen responding right away. And that's what you have to do against zone is knock down those long outside shots. And Corey doing a good job exposing that zone right away. He sure did. He said, listen, you show me that zone, I'll show you a triple. Corey Allen now leads the, excuse me, a six for the Titans. Seven is what Hogan's got to lead the team so far. Here's Pancake Johnson, who's been firing nothing but three so far today. He's already fired four of them. Lamoba bounce pass inside. And a nice hook move there by Anton Waters, but he can't get it to go. And the Titans trying to add to the lead. It almost a turnover there, but I like the expediency of this Titans offense. Macari Alexander, as we've talked about, definitely focuses on defense, but likes the creativity and the aggressive play on offense when the Titans get it going. Well, you understand when you're getting stopped, you know, that's an opportunity for you to get the ball and get out. You get run outs, you know, you get easy baskets off your, you know, your defense turns into offense, and then that's what it leads to, and McCarty understands that part of it. That, that's a high percentage of a basketball game when you're able to get those easy opportunities. Different so far in this game, six Western Kentucky turnovers. Titans have scored six points off of those, and they lead the game by three with under six and a half to go. In a very competitive first half, here's Hogan backing down Lawson straight from England. Let's see if he gets a little tea and crumpets, and he does! Well, there you see Jaleel Hogan doing a great job of using his body, and that's what you have to do, attack a seven foot two guy, hit him with the body first, knock him off balance, and then you're able to have the ability to go up and power it in. Good job by Jaleel. I don't know if it was tea and crumpets or a biscuit there, but either way it worked as Lamoba fires a three and nails it and stops the Titans. Six to nothing run, it's 29-27, but Detroit feeling much more confident on offense these last few minutes. Now in the hands of Josh McFowley, screen set. Didn't work out the way that he wanted it to, and here's Hogan now, right post. Double team on him and a turnover. Only the Titans second of the early afternoon, and Johnson fires it up and in, almost threw the foul there, but you can see that kid's athletic ability on that play. Well, he, he works hard. He'll, he'll run and get up and down the floor and transition that time, and pretty strong body on him that time able to take the bump and go in and power that in 6 7 240 from Hazard Kentucky Perry County Central it was a epic player there as Jenkins fires from the elbow that's short and rebounded by Western Kentucky here's Lamamba back the other way good defensive switch there by the Titans and Johnson fires over to Pancake Johnson who wants another three and this time he gets it 
Uh, you'll see him do that all afternoon long. You got to know where he's at on the floor because he's not shy, as you mentioned earlier, and he'll put the shots up, knocking down a wide open three point shot uncontested that time. Pancake Thomas now three of five from downtown. He's got nine points, and Western Kentucky leads it by three. A 30 second timeout will stick right here. So, Earl, you look at this Titans team, and they played some some solid uh, you know, powers throughout this non-conference schedule. They played at Illinois, they played at Murray State, they played at Florida State. They haven't you know, won a game since November 11th, but they've started to play better. What does this team need to do under Coach Alexander against a Western Kentucky team that's beatable, all due respect to them, but that's obviously here to fight as well? Well, they gotta have 40 minutes of solid basketball against this team. This is a team obviously that's got a lot of weapons. They're not gonna go away from pancake, to both, both uh, Johnson's out on the floor from Q and from Justin Johnson's and LaMumble. These guys can score the basketball, and you have to be aware of them all game long. They have to play solid defense. The first half has been great for them, but consistency is the biggest thing for the Titans right now. And, it, you know, when you don't win in a while, you, you, know, you, you, you kind of lose that ability to know how to do it. So this is a game right here where they got to kind of find their way and stay consistent throughout the whole ball game. Let's see how the Titans can finish this first half under five to go down by three. Every time you say pancake, you get a little more hungry. So let's not say his name as much, and a nice move inside, but can't get it to fall is Gerald Blackshire. Nice pass for McFowley, and it's right back the other way for the Hilltoppers. And McFowley turns it over. Nice steal by McFowley, down and, oh, he jams it home. McFowley took it straight to Poundtown. Are they gonna call? They're not gonna call a technical here, Earl, are they? Well, he hung on the rim that time, you know. Oh, so they're gonna say no basket. basket right. Well, he went up to dunk the basketball, not quite getting it in there. He hung. Oh, he hung wow. in hell. Wow, I think kinda, he did that. Kind of held him. Yeah, that was probably not the greatest <laughs> of ideas. Now, could they have called a technical on that? Did they change that rule? Am I? Well, he you allowed to hang on to the rim if people are going under you in transition. Right. So if you know you're allowed to protect yourself that time, but I I think he did that in fear of missing that dunk. I think so too, and and that's where things can change. Is right on the other end. It's, Justin Johnson and Johnson now starting to rack him up. He's got eight points for the Hilltoppers and kind of a four point swing there. The Titans have got to calm themselves down as they're trailing by five. There's Blackshear backing in Johnson. One move, two moves, and the third move's the one. Well, he got away with a double dribble that time. You can see Coach over here going completely nuts. He put the ball down when he first got it, and it was another dribble. As we mentioned, Coach Stansberry now in his first year at Western Kentucky, but his 15th year overall was at Mississippi State for a long time, multiple times to the tournament, 297 and 172 in his illustrious career so far. There's Johnson, thought about the shot, gets over to Pancake for yet another triple. That's short, rebound Detroit. Pancake finally misses the three. He's already made three of them. And here's McFowley in the paint, gets it over to Corey Allen. Allen sure can create, but he loses the ball off his foot. Turnover back to Western Kentucky. Pancake, no look pass. All the way out to Johnson for a triple, and that's too strong. Out of bounds, it'll be Detroit ball. That was a helter skelter couple minutes there, Earl. <laughs> well, they have the athletes with uh, Western Kentucky. They'll move the ball around the perimeter and try to find open players. But like I said, they're still trying to find their way as a basketball team as well. Western Kentucky leads it by three. We're under four minutes to go here in the first half. You're watching Titans basketball on ESPN3, WADO. Witness. People think I'm trash, but they're wrong. Today, I'm just an aluminum can, but one day, I could be a stadium. Daily Drill Curtain back here at Historic Cal and on Earl. The Titans are sporting an 83 and 21 record in their last 104 home games here against non Horizon League teams. And you know, so far today, we've seen this Titans team show us some fight, but mistake by young Josh McFowley. Probably should have tried to dunk the basketball there. A couple turnovers have given Western Kentucky the lead back at three points here. Well, consistent defense, though. We see these guys playing, and they have to continue to stay on this pace and keep this confidence level that they have right now. Here's Detroit. Looking to end the first half on a high note. Hogan, McFowley, Cole Long, Corey Allen, 
Blackshear, the five on the floor, and Hogan gets to go, and he's starting to establish his will in the post so far. Each and every game, he's a force down underneath that basket. Patience, takes his time, uses his body well down there, and that's one bright spot, another bright spot that they can look for in Jaleel Hogan. 11 lead all scores. Hogan leads the team with 13 coming into the game, along with Josh McFowley. We'll check that out with Corey Allen. And that ball turned over again, a steal there by the aforementioned Allen. He picks it, pops a triple, and it rolls in and out. Oh, a good looking shot there by Allen. Just couldn't get the fall. Better defense, swiping that ball out of Pancake's hand that time. And here's Johnson. He wants another three, and it's good again. Johnson has been money from downtown. He's now three of five, and that is the Kentucky, Western Kentucky Hillcoppers' seven triple in the first half, Earl. Leading scorer for the Hilltop is Q Johnson. It shows why able to knock down that three-point shot. Four-point advantage, Western Kentucky. Entry pass to Hogan. One-on-one -on -one now, two-on-one. -on -one. Muscles it up and gets it to go again. Hogan scored six of the last eight Titans points. Well, Hogan doing a great time, job that time, splitting the double team. He was doubled. He was able to get through that double team and go in and power it in. Q Johnson with 11. Julia Hogan with 13 to lead both teams in scoring. Under two to play. Titans trail by two. And there's another triple by Pancake Johnson. That's too strong. And here comes McFowley, Detroit the other way. Great to have you with us here. We get ready for the big holiday season. That ball almost turned over. The Titans, Earl, so far today have turned over Western Kentucky seven times, have scored six off those points. Got to keep that going. Got to continue to keep playing that solid defense. I guess it's safe to say the Pancake's got the green light for Western Kentucky. Huh? Safe to say Pancake can put butter, syrup, whatever, whipped cream, whatever he wants on those pancakes. He's definitely got the green light. Maybe a stop at IHOP later if the Hilltoppers win this game. <laughs> I mean, how many how many guys do you know is the l l legitimate name is Pancake? Yeah, I'm sure it's the story behind that. We couldn't get the, the total story, but his, his, his grandma gave him that name probably yeah. because that's all he would eat. Yep, <laughs> probably just uh, was a little tight eating up those pancakes. <laughs> as big as his head, and that ball stolen by Justin Johnson, and that's turnover number five for Detroit. Buck 30 left here in the first half, competitive first half. Titans have led at halftime in the past four games, but have been outscored in the second half in the last four games. Can they change that momentum here if they end up leading at halftime today? We'll know in about a buck 16 from now. Good defense here by Detroit, eight on the shot clock. Here's Waters, right wing over to Marty Lay, and Lay drains the triple. It's a three-point festival. That is the ninth three-pointer by Western Kentucky. And a McFowley three to answer, and he bakes it in. It's Saturday, but the bake is open. <laughs> yeah, didn't look, I don't know if he planned it that way, but it, it worked out, and we'll, we'll take those three. Yep, back to a two-point game. Titans have upped the defensive pressure these last couple minutes. Oh, they're going to call a ticky-tack foul. That looked like it was a pretty clean play to me, Earl, but they'll call it on Hogan, and that'll be Jaleel's second, the team's fifth. Both teams just with five fouls so far. It's... Nice to see that here. A lot of times at Callahan Hall, there's a lot of games where both teams are over 10 fouls. There's like seven, eight minutes left and a half. Well, they did a good job of trapping that time, but they allowed him to split the double team, and that's something that you can't do. When you get a person trapped, you have to keep them inside of that double team. He was able to break through it and drew the foul. Marty Lay, the freshman guard from Brisbane, Australia. They're getting ready for the Australian Open Tennis Tournament in about a month or so down under. I wonder if he's a big tennis guy. 34 seconds left here in the first half. Titans will probably at least get one more shot on offense. And that looks like a travel, and it will be Waters. Running Waters on that one, and that'll be turnover number nine for this Hilltoppers team in the first half. They're looking to be way over their average, Earl. They came in averaging about 11 turnovers a game. They're almost gonna get that in the first half. Well, Waters is one of their original Hilltoppers. He Western. He's one of the guys that's, that's, that's left over. And, only uh, three guys left from last year. He has around, but he's the original one. He, he gives them solid minutes out on the floor, but got a little happy feet that time underneath the basket. Not the, not the good animated movie kind of happy feet. <laughs> Titans look to either tie or take the lead. The shot clock off. It's in the hands of Dre Black on the elbow over to Corey Allen. Six seconds, five. Fires it and can't get it to go. Good looking shot there. Black can't believe it. And from half court is Justin Johnson. Oh, gave it a go there. But the Titans, for the first time in five games, will go in trailing at the half. Maybe they can reverse the curse and <laughs> win the second half today, Earl. Well, I, McCarty's got to be happy with what he saw in the first half of this game. Some solid defensive stops down at the other end. 
you know, even though it, you know, it got a little, little, little raggedy at the end with those three-point shots, but some of those shots were just good shots by Western Kentucky. They have to build on the positives. They'll go in and talk about the stops and transition. They move the ball around well. They got good inside presence from Jaleel Hogan uh, playing underneath the basket, and they have to build on some of those things the second half to come out with a victory tonight. How about this, Earl? Both teams shooting exactly 46.9% from the field in the first half, but the Hilltoppers shooting 47% on eight triples from downtown, the Titans 4 of 7 from downtown for 57%. Western Kentucky led by 11 from Q Johnson. Also 9 for Pancake Thomas, including 3 triples. And Justin Johnson with 8. The Titans led by 13 from Jaleel Hogan, 6 and 9 for the field. And 6 each from Corey Allen and Gerald Blackshear. 8 from young Josh McFoley. All right, we're at the break. Titans trail by 2. Much more to come here. You're watching Titans basketball on ESPN3 at w <laughs> So you can't save money? That's easy as pie. Brown bag and lunch instead of going out. $6 save times five days a week times 10 years is 21,000 bucks. That's a lot of lettuce. Small changes today, big bucks tomorrow. Feedthepig.org. First, there's shaving. Blades, sharp and precise. Then Gillette shielding. Comfy lubrication before and after. And also cooling. Ooh, got goosebumps. Gillette Pro Shield Chill with lubrication before and after the blades. Shields and cools while you shave. Pro Shield Chill from Gillette, the best a man can get. Pro Shield, available with or without chill. Welcome back to Callahan Hall Titan Media Day as the women's basketball program uh, embarks on its 40th season. Head coach Bernard Scott embarks on his second leading this program, and it was a successful first year. You overcame a lot of odds uh, finishing the season with just eight players, a lot of injuries, yet you managed to win seven road games in conference, uh, finished just two games back of second place in conference, 11-7 and seven overall. A very successful first season. I have to imagine this summer has been a lot of fun going out, seeing recruits, meeting other coaches. The, the reaction they give when they realize what you went through in your first year and, and the success you had. What's it been like talking to some of those around the country? Oh, it's been great. You know, we gained a lot of respect last year, um, playing the way we played and finishing the way we did. Um, so been on the road this summer recruiting. A lot of the coaches in league and out of league are saying, wow, what a great season you had with only eight young ladies. And the recruiting has really picked up. We're in on some young ladies that I don't think we would we would be in on if had we had a uh, rough season. And we've been able to get a few commitments from some players that I'm not sure we would have gotten if we didn't have a good year. So I think everyone's um, starting to notice what type of program we have here, the culture we're building, and how hard our young ladies work. So it's been very good. Coach, you're in a very unique circumstance in that you get to return all eight players from a team. You don't lose anyone. Can the importance of that be overstated in, in any, by any means? Danny, that's great. That all eight are coming, you know, um, coming back. Uh, they have game time experience, so it's going to really help us right away this year. Where last year we had some growing pains. It started off 0 and 4. We played with four freshmen, um, but this year is going to be a little different because they've been in those situations before, and with the new players we brought in, um, we. When it comes to health care, seconds can mean the difference between life and death. For Partners in Health, time is life. We have 18,000 people around the world. The Microsoft Cloud helps our entire staff stay connected and work together in real time to help those that need it. The ability to collaborate changes how we work. What we do together changes how we live. There's nothing quite as magical as staying at a Disney Resort hotel. So imagine complimentary rides to and from the park, even extra time with your family in the park. And right now, you can save up to 25% on rooms at select Walt Disney World Resort hotels. So if you're not staying here, just think what you might be missing. 29th at MotorCityMadness.HorizonLeague.com and be part of the farewell season at the Joe.
And you mentioned the chemistry. How important is that chemistry when all the 12 of your games are away from Callahan Hall? You start the season on a three-game road trip. Um, you have a number of road games and non-conference play. You're going to have to rely on those eight that kind of know what you're looking for as the newcomers continue to, to kind of get comfortable in this new system that they're getting into. Yeah, the chemistry is very important. And that's one of the reasons we are able to be so successful last year is because we had great chemistry. Our chemistry is good this year. We're working with different lineups in practice. So we got to figure out which lineups work best together. But we expect the chemistry to be very good, and we expect to um, be OK. NBA Saturday Prime Time. The difference between you and me, I tell it like it is, you tell it how it might be. <laughs> the tech, that damn Max coming, I know he's gonna be smiling tomorrow. They are frequently a laughing stock. And oh, by the way, had the temerity, the unmitigated goal, to sit up there and bloviate about this stuff, and you ain't even in first place. Wow! Shut the hell up! <laughs> Catch those vapors, Stephen A. The debate starts here. First take, now on don't ESPN, weekdays at 10. Oh, no, just stop it! You're a little more athletic than you were just by virtue of having a little more depth. How does the Bernard Scott team change this year, or is it mostly the same? Well, we're going to run a lot of the same stuff offensively. We're going to be up tempo. We want to play a little faster than we did last year. Uh, we want to get better on the defensive end. We struggled with that last year, so we're going to get after it a little more defensively. But you're still going to see a team that scores 70 or more points, and hopefully this year we can hold teams to, you know, 65, low 60s as far as um, defensively goes. Uh, and going on about those newcomers, uh, Kelsey Mitchell obviously headlines a, a class of uh, five that's coming in. She's a great graduate transfer from the University of Michigan and uh, that's a big pedigree University of Michigan what does she bring from that experience at U of M uh, that maybe can rub off on some of these girls and what does she add to this team that maybe was missing a year ago well she's bringing um, big time experience playing in the Big Ten being playing at a BCS school she's bringing that experience she's also if you look at Kelsey and you look at the rest of our team you can tell that she's physically stronger than a lot of our young ladies so she's been through uh, a lot of things physically at Michigan as far as um, Wow. <laughs> Sorry about that. But um, no, she's she's doing a great job for us. She's a great teammate. Um, but we expect her to do big things. You have Westbrook has become must watch television. Durant quickly to the basket. No, thank you very much. Okay, bye-bye. Eighth reception today. You mean phone call? Yesterday I had 109 receptions. A few more, I could have broken the record. What record? They're phone calls. I'm sorry, is this the reception desk or the phone call desk? Reception desk. Thank you. Excuse me. ESPN, Antonio speaking. Hold on, I'll put you right through. All day. The Joe. Family Drew Kierden back here, courtside, about set to start the second half, and it was the Jaleel Hogan show in the first half for Detroit Earl. Six to nine from the field, one to two from the line, 13 points to lead all scores so far. And if you can get this going in the second half, Titans will have a good chance to win their first game in a long time. Well, you know, with the exception of uh, giving up the three-point shot, and uh, that's that's Western Michigan's thing right there. They got to limit those guys. You know, they, they knock down a lot of three-pointers right now, and they them to have the lead. But Jaleel, you know, doing a great job posting up underneath the basket, showing his ability to, to score underneath, and, you know, and he's also got the ability to knock down that 15-foot jump shot every once in a while. So Hill, Yeah, Hilltoppers 8-17 mm -hmm. from downtown. Titans actually shot a better percentage, but the Hilltoppers made double the amount of threes. Detroit 4-7 for downtown, including two or three for Josh McFally. And Chris Jackets only made shot today a triple. He has three, Corey Allen and Gerald Blackshear with six each, two for Cole Long. We got the start today with uh, Jaleel Hogan not being able to start the game. He was in violation of team rules, nothing serious from what we've been told. Josh McFally with eight and Jaleel Hogan with 13, a big first half for Hugh Johnson. 11 points for him to lead the way for Western Kentucky and nine for Pancake Thomas, including 
three of seven from downtown. Well, the Titans did a great job of taking care of the basketball. The only five turnovers there in the first half. You know, rebounding is not bad. And I said only glaring statistics that stand out at me is the fact that, you know, for 8 to 17 from the three-point line. And Earl, you mentioned rebounding. A key stat to watch. The Titans have been outworked to the boards in seven straight games, including three by double digits, but they've won the battle of the glass the last two times out, 43-37 over Toledo and 39-34 at Bowling Green. Both losses, of course. But today so far, Western Kentucky with 20 rebounds to Detroit's 15. Same starting fives for both these squads to start the second 20, and it's in the hands of Deshaun Ray Black. Now Cole Long topside. Titans really established some aggressive will and play early on in the game. Let's see if they can start that off in the second half as well. The defensive set by Western Kentucky out of the break here is Long. Over to Blackshear, looks for Allen, has him eight in the shot clock. Double team, threw some traffic over to Jenkins, wants a three, fires a three and makes a three. Good start for the Titans here, Earl. Well, that's the shot that we're accustomed. Like I said earlier, he knocked one down in the first half and you know, maybe he's starting to get a feel for that, that, that shot from the perimeter because he's capable of knocking those down. Some 20 point games last year. And you know, he wants to get back to that, that place where he can, can knock those shots down consistently. It's our fifth lead change. We had seven ties. Biggest lead for Western Kentucky was six. Biggest for Detroit was five. Detroit out painting so far. Western Kentucky 20 to 12 in the paint. Thomas can't get that triple to go. And here come the Titans back the other way. Led by Corey Allen. Now in the hands of Cole Long, thought about a three, maybe smartly brought it down there. He's not a big three-point shooter. Now Jenkins, we're in that zero. Just underway here in the second half, Dan Leach, Earl Kirt. No look pass from Allen to Blackshear. Can't get it to go, but a nice pass there from Corey Allen. And here comes Justin Johnson. Check that out. Hugh Johnson. There's a lot of Johnsons on this team. I apologize for my mistake there. And we got a held ball. The possession arrows with Western Kentucky. And Earl, a big story in the first half was the Titans forcing nine Hilltopper turnovers and scoring six points off of them. Well, that's what the area that uh, is going to help them win basketball games right now. That's like I mentioned, you know, at halftime, the only glaring statistic is the fact that they were able to knock down eight three-pointers in the first half. They can find them and match up with them on the perimeter. Not a lot of them have those kind of shots. They're doing a great job otherwise defensively. Titans first lead since the middle stages of the first half. A pick and pop by Johnson. Rolls in and out. We got a foul underneath the basket. And it looks like it's going to be called on Gerald Blackshear. It is. That'll be... Blackshear's second personal, the team's first. Well, team's kind of staying out of foul trouble so far, Earl. We haven't seen that a lot with the Titans this year. Well, it's pretty solid, and we mentioned that, you know, Jaleel coming off the bench, and he's usually the guy that picks up early foul trouble, but uh, in the first half, you know, he's not starting the ball game. He came in. He's pretty safe right now, and they're going to have him down the stretch, which I think is important for the Titans. It's Pancake Thomas now up to Johnson. And to the other Johnson, Q, who drives down the lane, tried to tomahawk it in, but... Cole Long fouls him, so maybe a smart foul there to stop the easy dunk. Well, if you're going to go to the basket, that's the way you're supposed to go. You can see here going up with a lot of power and strength. You're guaranteed to either score the bucket, get foul. You know, one of those two things that happen for you when you go in strong like that, and he was able to draw the foul. Hugh Johnson led all Western Kentucky Hilltoppers in the first half with 11. No free throws until now. First one is up and good. He shoots 71% from the free throw line on the season. The team 72%, which is much better than Detroit at 62%. Titans have got to work on that. Second one up, and that rolls in. So the Hilltoppers back in front. That is now our sixth lead change, 42-41. The slimmest of margins, under 18 to go here in the second. Let's see if the Titans can get that assertiveness like we did at the beginning of the first half, and that play Makes it feel good if you're a Detroit Titans fan as Blackshear jams it over. Well, you know, I like to see more of that out of Blackshear. In fact, you know, he needs to go up strong every single time with the basketball like that. A lot of times when he don't score around the basket it's because he doesn't take it with the force and the power that's needed to put it down. But that time, went in there forcefully and slammed that one down. Took that ball directly to Pound Town, and it's off Western Kentucky. Justin Johnson cannot believe it. And that'll be turnover number 10 for Western Kentucky. Now, Ironically, Earl, I mentioned that the Titans did a great job turning over Western Kentucky, 10 turnovers now in all. Western Kentucky caused five Titans turnovers and scored 10 points off those turnovers. Titans just six off the nine in the first half for Western Kentucky, but that's because of a lot of threes, and that was a bad turnover as Corey Allen, or check that, the Sean Rebecca threw to nobody. Well, yeah. 
Not only five turnovers, but costly five turnovers, though, yep. to get 10 points out of them. Yep, there were three triples as a result of four, uh, three of those turnovers. And the Momo right in front of our broadcast position gets it into Howard. Howard pretty quiet in the first half. 0-2 and a personal foul, no points for Tobias T.J. Howard, the freshman guard from Lithonia, Georgia, right around Rice, a little outside of Atlanta. Good mm. basketball down there, Earl. Momo moves on, Jenkins off the window, can't get it to go, rebound Titans. And here comes Deshaun Ray Black, who just caused that most recent turnover. Little spin move in the lane, gets his own board, can't get it to go, a couple shots there, and no luck for Black. Thomas almost loses the ball on a pass, a little mustard on it. Now Titans back in their defensive set. Big opening four minutes here, and Thomas throws it out of bounds, so teams exchanging turnovers, and. You know, this has been a battle so far today, Earl. The real question it becomes, what team's going to want it more in these last 16, 17 minutes? Well, we talked about 40 minutes of basketball. I mean, the Titans right now are hanging right here in the ball, right there in the ball game, and to consistently keep playing like this. And their letdowns have been, you know, at the beginning of uh, uh, the second half of ball games, and uh, they seem to be a little bit more consistent right now. Here's Josh McFowley, the super sophomore, over to Corey Allen, the super freshman. A little two-man game with those, and we got to travel on McFowley. He's not happy about that. That'll be turnover number seven for Detroit. Turnover starting to pile up here early, uh, Earl. Not a good start uh, in the second half on that note. Well, Western Kentucky didn't do anything to cause that one. That was, that's like one of those turnovers that you, you know, you really hate to get. You know, that's like just on a traveling call to you know, you cut them down. And after five in the first half, as far as the turnovers for Detroit, two in the last three possessions. Start the second half, and we got a foul on the inside on Blackshear. That'll be Gerald's third, and the team's third. So fouls piling up, turnovers piling up, and we will see Jaleel Hogan, who's coming off the bench tonight or this afternoon, and he's obviously, of course, uh, Earl, a starter on this team. But for some uh, team issues, he is coming off the bench today, which you mentioned, and not that you ever want to see a guy violating a team rule, it could help the Titans. <laughs> no question. You need him down the stretch. You need him out of foul trouble down the stretch, and that's the kind of situation he's headed toward right now. Now in the hands of Pancake Thomas. The guy likes his flapjacks. A little floater, can't get that to go, and both teams cold from the field to start this out, but another chance for Western Kentucky, and that one is taken and made by Tobias Harris. His first points of the afternoon, and the Hilltoppers now with our... Seventh lead change back on top by one. And there's Detroit back on offense. McFally with a screen set by Hogan. Dumps it off to Cole Long, who puts it up and in. Well, McFally doing a good job that time, breaking it up, recognizing where Cole Long was. Nice little shovel pass to him for an easy lay-in. And back and forth we go in a steamy Callahan. All might be freezing outside, but it's getting hot here inside. Titans looking for a big win and a triple no good by Q Johnson. We got another foul. It's the second time in the last few possessions that there's been a missed Hilltopper shot, but a foul inside keeping the ball with Western Kentucky. It was Justin Johnson, an active body underneath that basket. He's a, a handful trying to keep him off the boards down there. All right, back and forth here in the second half. Titans lead it by one, under 16 to go. You're watching Titans basketball on ESPN3 WADL. Turn down! NBA Saturday primetime. Back then, turn down for what was a question. I think I found the answer. Turn down for NBA Saturday primetime. Turn down for the season's unmissable game. Turn down for basketball. Get my Indiana notes out. Daily Gerald Kirton back here as he got a nice blasting dunk by Gerald Blackshear. And well, you can see him with good hands. He got the seal, um, showed, him the, showed him the hand right there, and went up with power, slammed that one straight through the basket. And then you want to see a lot more of that. He's got the ability and athleticism with him. He can go up and dunk the basketball yeah, like that every time. You know, he's got to go strong. It's been like yeah. this, play, you know, Blackshear has been so ready just to break out and he'll take a step forward and then one back. And maybe we're finally going to start seeing him as we enter Horizon League play in a week or so. A nice back end move by Justin Johnson. Maybe Blackshear is ready for that true breakout consistently for this Titans team. 
Well, he's definitely getting his experience, uh, you know, doing these games. So once the rising leagues start, he should be ready for it. Tenth lead change, Western Kentucky back in front. Oh, and let's see what they call it. They're going to call a block foul on Justin Johnson. That will be his first and the team second. Well, there was a lot of acting right there by Justin that time. The officials were right on top of that. I mean, he tried to draw the first little bump by Jaleel. You know, when you six seven and 245 pounds, you don't go down that easy. When the Golden Globes were just out, that's what was down. Maybe he's in, in line for a Golden Globe nomination. A late one. Well, the officials are on top of that. That's, you know, that's beef against beef down there. You're not going to fall that easy. There's Allen into Hogan, who puts it up and in. And as we mentioned, Earl, if he can establish that play, they could stop him in the first half. Maybe that's what it takes to win this game in the second half. Well, he's well rested and out of foul trouble, and that's a plus for uh, Jaleel Hogan. 11 lead changes. We've had six in the last three minutes here in the second half. Here's Pancake Thomas, who's cooled off after making three triples in the first half, and we've got a foul on Detroit there. A little ticky-tack reach-in foul. They're going to call that on Long. We'll be on Cole Long. That'll be Long's third foul and the fifth on the team. Remember, Titans has had five fouls late in the first half. Same with Western Kentucky, but already five in the first five-plus minutes here in the second. Titans up by one. Back and forth we go. Ball in the hands of Tobias Harris. Fouling on him. Titans trying to pressure defense the way they did at the start of the first half. And a nice spin move by Johnson. It gets it to go. Yeah, McFally closing it, but not a little too little too late. Johnson extremely aggressive that time. Nice pick, nice roll to the basket, and Pancake with a nice pass for easy lay-in. 12 points now for Johnson. Second on the team behind Q Johnson. Johnson boys combining for 25. And Jenkins down the lane, off the window and in. And you like to see that kind of an aggressive move from CJ. Mm -hmm. Jenkins showing us a little bit of everything this, this afternoon. Three point shooting, the ability to get to the basket, and we know he's capable of doing those things. He's even got his trademark socks there. He's always got a new fresh pair as that ball went out of bounds over to the Titans. Today it looks like he's, I, I can't really see him Earl, but some kind of a skeleton pumpkin it looks like. <laughs> but he's, they call him socks for a reason. His sock game is like the force man, super strong. It's gotta be Christmas socks now, not pumpkins. No, yeah, maybe he's just trying to bring back Halloween. Hey, there was no snow back then Earl. <laughs> Titans now back up again by a point. 12 lead changes in this game. Here's. McFally down the lane, off the window, can't get it to go, but Hogan cleans it up and puts it in. And Jaleel now leading all scores with 17. 51-48, this crowd starting to get into it. Remember, they haven't seen a win at all, not just here at Callahan, since November 11th, the first game of the season against Adrian College, a NAI team. Here's Johnson down the lane, he gets it to go, and you don't want to let Justin Johnson gain some confidence here in the second half. Check that out, Q Johnson. Left wing three by Jenkins, a little strong, but it's tipped uh -huh. in by Hogan, six straight for Jalethal. I'll tell you what, Judge, Hill Hogan's like a magnet around that basketball on the offensive boards. Anything that comes off that, that board, he's able to get a hand on it, to tap it back in, either pull it down for a rebound. He's doing a great job of giving him second opportunities. 19 and seven for Hogan, just a few rebounds away from a double-double. There's Pancake Thomas, way too easy their defensive breakdown of the tights. A rare, by one. rare drive by Pancake. And right back the other way is Corey Allen, and they're going to call the offensive foul. That time, position was had by Ben Lawson, the Englishman, and that'll be Allen's first, the team six. I like the move down the lane, but a little too much at the end there, Earl. It's very rare you see seven-foot guys take charges like that, but Ben Lawson was in position. Usually he'll go for the block shots, but he did a good job of stepping in, taking the contact that time. Lawson. Senior forward, 7'1", 235 from Hitch in England. Played at Oakland's College before coming to Western Kentucky. Remember, this team's only got three players returning from last year, a ton of transfers, and a new coach in Rick Stansberry, and, and they've hung in some of their games. A lot of turnover like the Titans. And there's a pass inside the loss in reverse lay and no good rebound Hogan. Hogan now two rebounds away from a double-double. 
Here's Jenkins over to McFowley. Wants the rainbow three. Splish splash. He's taking a bath. McFowley from downtown. Well, that's the one great thing about McFowley. He can go cold a whole game, but when he catches on fire, he catches on. He's capable of knocking down four or five threes in a row if he catches on fire. One word I like to use for McFowley is no matter how good or bad he's playing, the kid's fearless. <laughs> that could be a good thing and a bad thing. And there's Lawson. Oh, they're going to call a blocking foul on CJ. He looked like he had position, but maybe too late of a break there to just create a, the just, charge. Just a little late getting there. They had the right ideal of coming across for the help defense, but was a little late getting his feet planted and in position to take the charge. What an opening eight-plus minutes. Titans up by 256-54. to 54. You're watching Titans basketball on ESPN3. <laughs> Talk of where's Kevin Durant? Kevin Durant has been spectacular for this team. Russell Westbrook has become must watch television. Durant quickly to the basket. Turn down NBA Saturday Prime Time. Stanley Gerald Kirton back here live at a store at Cal and all the Titans taking the fight to Western Kentucky. There's Josh McFowley firing and filling up a three, and Chris Jenkins finding McFowley on that play. And Jaleel Hogan has been a factor, scoring six straight before that triple. Titans up by two here and really looking to continue that going. Well, Jaleel Hogan, the most consistent uh, offensive player for the Titans, uh, then McFowley leads this team in, in scoring right now. And both of those guys are going to be special down the stretch here for the Titans this afternoon. You get a free throw made there by Ben Lawson, and it's back to a one-point game, 56-55, under 12 to go here. The Titans need a win in the worst way. They've lost nine straight. They have led at the half in their last four games. This game today, they actually trailed by two, and Jenkins drives the lane, draws the foul. Well, so he'll go to the free throw line, Earl. Well, once again, you see uh, Western Kentucky goes back to the 2-3 zone that time, and... Last time it was Corey Allen that kind of brought him out of it with the long three-point shot. This time they penetrated the zone. And a little bit of a different look with Lawson, a 7-2 guy in the middle of that zone to make it a little bit more effective. Jabari McGee drew the foul. That's one of the two transfers that played at Tennessee. The other one, Willie Carmichael, just coming off a suspension the last game, but not playing so far. He Jenkins makes the first free throw. Willie Carmichael played every game as a freshman at Tennessee, then transferred to West Kentucky, and Jabari McGee fouled him later in that semester. A lot of guys moving over, you know, Stansberry's doing a great job of uh, bringing guys with him. I mean, he came <laughs> came to Western Kentucky, but he didn't come empty handed. He did bring something to the table with him. Except he inherited one of the worst road schedules you ever see. Seven straight road <laughs> well, games, 10,000 miles. That coach had to have some idea he wasn't going to be here. <laughs> oh, yes. He got his Titans by two down the lane is McGee. He draws the foul and fills it up a big play there by the redshirt sophomore, 6'7", 205 from Albany, Georgia. And one of my favorite military academies, Hargrave Military Academy. Mm -hmm. My team, Brewster, I used to play at Brewster uh, in my basketball playing days, or I was almost as good as you. <laughs> you were even better times 100 million. Uh, they used to play uh, Brewster in that series. Mm -hmm. Little Hargrave Military down south. Mm -hmm. So McGee to the line on the season so far comes in. A 75% free throw shooter misses it. We're tied, by the way, for the ninth time. We've had 13 lead changes so far today. A real back and forth treat of the game. And again, the both teams need real bad, but the Titans obviously need it in the worst way. There's Jenkins, pick and pop, right elbow, short, and rebounded by Western Kentucky. Almost picked off there by Cole Long. Back the other way comes the Hilltoppers. Here's Junior Lamoba down the lane, and he scores it. And he's got a nice step when he gets close to the basket. Lamoba, another one of those guys that can also shoot that all-side shot, but has the ability at 6'5", you know, 200 pounds, he can get to the basket. Now our 14th lead change sees Western Kentucky up for the first time since real early in this second half. About to hit the 10-minute mark. Titans trail by two. There's Allen, long NBA three. Too strong, rebounded by McGee. Here's the Hilltoppers. They've got numbers, and McGee's going to jam it home. And the entire Western Kentucky bench and cheering section behind us to our right up and making noise after that one. The Titans 
they got to reestablish themselves so early. They could be in trouble. Good timeout by Bacardi that time. He doesn't like what he sees in transition right now. You got to get back, got to protect on misses. His team was slow getting back. You know, you saw three Western Michigan players that time in transition and no Titans back on defense. Western Kentucky on a 6 to 2 run. 10 19 left. They lead it by four. You watch Titans basketball on ESPN 3, WADL. Anthony Davis is one of the top lockers in the NBA, so he was a perfect fit for the IT department. Blog. Blog. Anthony. Blog. It's just my blog. Is your blog business related? Blog. No. There you go. Blog. Blog. Can't blog. stop me from using my phone. Blog. 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 Nothing gets past that guy. I can still play solitaire. No, you can't. Blog. 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 Kenley Jero Kiernan back here courtside. Cal and all 10 19 left. Titans by four, but a 6 2 run by Western Kentucky. And Earl, as good as the Titans played in the first seven plus minutes here in the first half, Hilltoppers have really been a move in the last four. Well, off of a missed shots, they were able to get rebounds and, and they'll get out and run. You know, they have athletes out on the floor. They're going to push the ball right down your throat. That's part of their game. This zone defense is designed for them to be one and done, and they're looking to take off into the races. And I'm sure that Bacardi talked about that. Coach Bacardi Alexander talked about that in that timeout. Big offensive possession here out of the timeout, about to hit the 10 minute mark of the second half. McFowley left wing, three, rolls in and out, but Long gets the board, skies in for it. Spin move blocked, and just unlucky there for the Titans. They had a nice looking three, but Long loses the ball after the block. Mamomba. Back to Lawson, who's going to try to jam it again, and we get a foul call. They'll call it on Blackshear, and that'll be his fourth. One more, he's gone, Earl. So that's nine team fouls on Detroit. They had five of the entire first half, and you look at this where Lawson's able to kind of slip in there, and Blackshear got him. One more, and it's a double bonus the rest of the way for Western Kentucky. Well, that's a little early for Blackshear to pick up that fourth foul right now, and, uh, you know, probably have to see a little bit more Jaleel earlier than what you want to, but... You know, that, that's unfortunate right there. Lawson makes the first, a 63% free throw shooter on the season. Lawson so far today with six points, two of two from the line, has three rebounds as well, the seven footer from England. And he makes the second. So now the biggest Western Kentucky lead of the game and their largest lead since 12.45 left in the first. They have gone on an eight to two run here off to the Titans led by two. And you have to give this two three zone a lot of credit for them taking this lead right now. It's been effective and they've been able to slow the Titans scoring down. Here's Allen trying to solve this own riddle and he does with that triple as Corey Allen has been solid from downtown today. I'll tell you Second what, triple. that was a big bucket that time by Corey Allen right there. He knocked that three point shot down and that's what you got to do. You got to put some points up against that zone defense. Let's see if the Titans can get some stops here. Oh. Allen looked like he was fouled there offensively by Pancake Thomas. They get it inside to McGee. Can't get it to go, but a foul called on the miss, and the fouls are piling up. As I mentioned earlier now, it's 10. The Western Kentucky Hilltoppers in the double bonus the rest of the way. Having nine minutes with two free throws is a big deal on any foul other than offensive. Right, that I means they'll get to the free throw line every single time here, you know, down the stretch. And, you know, you don't want to get them into a double bonus this early in a ball game right now. And that's unfortunate for the Titans. And to be careful now to play solid defense and stay away from the fouls. Conversely, the Titans, or excuse me, Western Kentucky just with two team fouls. McGee, his first is up and no good. McGee comes in on the season. 75% from the free throw line. He's now 0 of 3 on the afternoon, so not a good free throw performance by McGee. But Earl, we've talked about this all game long. Titans have gotten better in the first half, but have fallen apart in the second half. Can they stem the tide today? Well, so far, so good. I mean, it's a four-point ball game right now, and the Titans are right here, so they have to continue to keep playing. they got to figure a way to figure out this zone defense right now and also play better de defense on the other end of the floor without fouling. Corey Allen draining triples can obviously always help solve a 2-3 zone D. Here's Jenkins, 15 on the shot clock. Here's McFowley, NBA range. Splish, splash, he's taking a bath. And like we said, that's how you solve the 2-3 zone. That was great ball movement at that time as they went from to swing the ball all the way around the perimeters that time and work it back. And it's hard for the zone to shift quick enough. And McFowley was able to knock down that long three-point shot for him. Titans, a three-pointer. McFowley steals it. He's down to the races. 
Jenkins trailing him. He puts it up at that time. Smartly <laughs> does not dunk it, Earl. So a 5-0 Spurger by Detroit. They're back in front. That's our 15th lead change. Well, McFarley learned from the first time. Yeah, he went up high above the rim that time, but laid it in softly. Now, if that was you out there, you could have dunked it. McFarley needs to lay the ball in. <laughs> it was costly in the first half when he dunked it, went out of the basket. He pulled the rim out, and they called a no basket on McFowler's Justin Johnson back in for Rick Stansberry's squad. About to go under eight to play. The Titans back in front after a 5-0 spurt. Things looked like they were maybe getting out of hand for a minute there when Western Kentucky went on an 8-2 run, but the Titans have stabilized it, made two triples. As I mentioned, eight triples in all for Detroit, eight triples in all for Western Kentucky. 8 of 14 for Detroit, 8 of 19 for Western Kentucky. Johnson can't get it to go. A clean play there. Good defense by Detroit. Here comes the Titans the other way. McFowley over to a wide open. Corey Allen for three. Slash, slash. He's taking a bath. That's three triples in the last three possessions. And that's how you solve that 2 3 zone. I'll tell you what, Corey Allen, some exciting performances here in Callahan Hall as he dropped 18 against Eastern Michigan. And he's trying to repeat that, repeat that performance here this afternoon. Corey Allen now with 12, 3 of 5 from downtown. In the lane, Lamova can't get it to go. Rick Stansberry can't believe there was no call there. Here's Jenkins, Titans on an 8 to nothing run. Oh, he gets it stripped of CJ. It's out of bounds. It'll stay Titans ball, and that'll bring us to the under-8 timeout. So just when things looked like they were getting a little out of hand for Detroit, an 8 nothing run, two, three triples, excuse me, have helped the Titans get back in front by four. You're watching Detroit Titans basketball on ESPN3 and WADL. The debate starts here. First take, now on ESPN, weekdays at 10. If you have a typical airline credit card, you only earn double miles when you buy stuff from that airline. Wait. Is this where you typically shop? You should be getting double miles on every purchase. Switch to the Capital One Venture Card. With Venture, you earn unlimited double miles on every purchase, everywhere, every day. Not just airline purchases. Seriously, double miles, everywhere. What's in your wallet? In a second half. Stanley Drew Kirton back here at Historic Cal and all Titans in the midst of an 8-0 run and Corey Allen's triple really helped complete that nice move there, Earl, as the Titans were down four now, up four. And this Detroit team matching Western Kentucky triple for triple right now. No question. Uh, you know, only one, no triples actually for Western Kentucky here in the second half. And the Titans able to expose that zone by moving the ball around and a good knockdown by McFarley and then another one by Corey Allen right there. Timely three-point shots. And now the Titans get the ball out of the under eight timeout, they are up by four. Getting great balance scoring, and McFowley fires in a three. The McFowley Chronicles, and that's the Titans 4-3 in their last six possessions. Well, he's got such a quick release, and you can't really tell when he's going to let that go, but and he's got range on that shot, too, as he knocked another big triple down. Largest lead of the game for just a moment there at seven until Q Johnson hits another triple. That's his fourth. He's now four of seven from downtown. 18 points to lead all Hilltoppers. Hogan and McFowley each with 19. And the Titans lead it by four. McFowley wants another one. And why not go back to the well? When you're thirsty, you got a drink. Well, that's the kind of guy he is. Uh, when he gets it going, he's got it going. And right now, I mean, I tell you what, some big shots by him. 14 to three run by Detroit. They're up by seven. And we're about to go to under six to play. There's Q Johnson once and again, and he hits it again. What is this, a McFowley, Q Johnson? Who does it better? <laughs> Back and forth festival? <laughs> well, that's only the second trade this, this half uh, by Western Kentucky. Uh, and McFowley's putting on the show, putting on a three-point clinic right here. Q Johnson leads all Hilltoppers with 21. McFowley all scores with 22. Almost drew the foul there. He wants, can he make three in a row? Look, like he almost got fouled there. He finally misses. Detroit still leads it by four, but here comes Pancake Thomas over to Lamoba. Looking for a posting up. Ben Lawson. Lawson with a little skyhook Kareem Abdul-Jabbar move, <laughs> and he makes it to cut the lead to two, and just like that, it's a one-possession game, Earl. These teams are going back and forth, really heating up here, you know, with a little over five minutes left in this basketball game. We're in for a good one down the stretch. I absolutely think this is the best the Titans have played for you know, an almost 40-minute game in the last several. 
at least going back to that Eastern Michigan game. Here's Chris Jenkins to McFally, who hit two triples in a row, barely missed the third. Down the lane, slicing and dicing, finds an opening just as the shot clock expires, misses it, but it's put right in for the Titans by Malik Eichler, the German sensation who just came into the ball game. Well, Eisler's matching up seven foot of Eisler against Lawson right now. Two seven footers going against each other. Titans back up by four. Big minutes coming up here. That can't go for Johnson. It flutters out of bounds over to the Titans. And it looks like Cole Long got banged in the jaw there. He's a little shaken up. Looks like he'll be okay. He's put in some good minutes for the Titans today. He got the start instead of Jaleel Hogan. Hogan. Well, it's definitely a confidence builder for him. I haven't seen a lot of minutes uh, throughout this season, but to get a start and go out and, and he's making a contribution and making his presence felt out on the floor. Big possession here for the Titans as they lead it by four. We're about to go under four minutes and 30 seconds left. Bakari Alexander has mentioned that he's talked about this season being into three 10-game segments. The second 10-game segment starts today. Boy, the Titans could use a huge win to start that off 1-0 after 1-9 in that first 10-game segment of the season. Here's Chris Jenkins, pick and pop, right wing three, and it's gone! The Titans are absolute fire from downtown in the second half, Earl. I'll tell you, Chris Jenkins is filling that shot tonight. He's able to knock down another shot from the outside, and that's the confidence that he needs. And maybe this game right here will bring him back to where he was last year. Detroit matches their largest lead at seven. They've hit eight of 12 from downtown in the second half, and 12 of 19 in the ball game. Here's Pancake Thomas. He wants a triple, and that's going to flutter off behind the rim. Tipped around, but back into the hands of Justin Johnson. Or check that, Q Johnson. And now Lamoba will calm it down. Under four minutes to go or the crowd into it. Titans have matched their largest lead of seven. 22 for McFally, 19 for Hogan, and 12 each for Jenkins and Allen. And a great defense that time by Long. Turnover press and a pass to Allen, who lays it up and in. And it's all working for Detroit now. You think Stansbury will probably call a timeout here. He's motioning to the referees and he calls the timeout. Got to give Long, Long a... A lot of credit for getting that steal. Not only did he get the steal, he tapped it and saved it out of bounds, threw it back in to get the easy layup by Corey Allen on the other end. Some of the best basketball we've seen by Detroit all season long. Their largest lead of nine with 319 left. You're watching Titans basketball on WADL and ESPN3. A foot and lighthearted I take to the open road. Healthy, free, the world before me, the long brown path before me leading wherever I choose. The east and the west are mine. The north and the south are mine. All seems beautiful to me. Farley and, and, and Corey Allen knocking down those threes, bringing Western Kentucky out of his zone defense, and then some solid defense by Long. All right, it's the first game since uh, the year anniversary of Titan Reggie passing away, the longtime Titan fan. It's Jenkins gets the rebound there, and I want to send a little special message out to Reggie, all the people that love him, and I know that he'd be loving this game and the hustle the Titans have had tonight. No question, Iceland done a great job that time defensively down underneath the basket as he's Protected it. Justin tried to throw his body in. Eisler did a good job of holding his position. And he's doing a pretty good job as a rim protector down there. He's coming a little ways too, getting some quality minutes here down the stretch. Turnover there on, on Jenkins. Titans lead it by nine, their largest lead. We've had 15 lead changes, nine ties. A triple is short there by Johnson. Flutters out of bounds. Back to the Titans. 
And Earl, you look at the difference in this game, obviously the three-point shooting in the second half, Titans 8-12, but Detroit has forced 14 Western Kentucky turnovers, some of them very, very important later here in this second half. We saw them do that, you know, early in the ball game, and, and now you can see that uh, they're trying an, another half-court trap here, uh, Western Kentucky. Titans trying to probe the outside. There's Cole Long for a rare triple. That's short. And it goes out of bounds, though, and it's going to stay Titans ball. So, you know, even when the Titans make a mistake, they're, they're finding a way to keep things going here. Everything going Detroit's way in the last six, seven minutes. Well, you want to see Cole Long get confident. That's his shot from out there. You know, he did a great job in high school last year knocking down those shots from him. He's just got to get his confidence going because he's a pure shooter. Yeah, Cole Long definitely can make those shots. But Earl, so far this year, you, you just haven't seen him take a ton of threes. He's actually 0 of 9 now from downtown. But as you mentioned, yeah. he has got the ability to really start nailing those. And as a young guy coming to this program, that's something you want to see Bakari Alexander continue to kind of impress right. on him that he can get it done. Well, I haven't had a lot of opportunities, but got to start here this afternoon, and you know he's going to build on that, and you'll, you'll see him get better. And that's part of the process right now with uh, you know with Bacardi Alexander as the head coach. He's wanted to develop some of his young talent. Eisler have an opportunity, kid from Germany, seven footer, getting some quality minutes down here, and seeing transition right here. Great that's play, solid, by Cole solid Long. steal by Cole Long, and was able to save the ball and get in, and a big basket that time by Corey Allen as he laid it in softly. So Detroit on that 21-8 run and. The last six plus minutes, 227 left. To say a couple more offensive makes here by Detroit might be enough to put this one away and give the Titans their first win since November 11th. It's amazing to think that it's been that long since the opening win of the season. They haven't beaten, unfortunately, a D1 team yet this year. That was against Adrian College pre Thanksgiving by a couple weeks. You know, when you haven't tasted victory in a long time, it's just that much sweeter, my friend. We always talk about 40 minutes of basketball with two minutes left. We need two more solid minutes. Here's McFowley over to Jenkins. 12 on the shot clock. Good defense here by Western Kentucky. Titans kind of allowing the shot clock to go down there and wait for a good shot. They are not in any kind of a rush here. Here's Corey Allen with three to shoot, two to shoot, one to shoot. Has to fire. It does, but it's short. And that'll be a shot clock violation. So not the greatest of possessions there where if they make the basket there, it might be enough to put it away. You want you don't want to rush a shot. You don't want to take a quick one, but yet you don't want to get caught by that shot clock either. So you want to try to get a quality shot off near the end of the clock. And here comes Tobias Howard. He's going to walk the ball up under two to play here. Western Kentucky with their largest deficit in nine. Moba down the lane, puts it up and puts it in. So cuts the lead to seven here. Now remember the. Hilltoppers only two team fouls. They'll have to foul five more times before it gets to a one plus the bonus situation. You might see that start happening here for Rick Stansberry. There's one of them. But you're going to need at least four more to get to the one plus the bonus. Well, the Titans got to be smart right here with the basketball. They got to look to keep attacking. You know, you, want, you don't want to try to play the clock and just run the game out. You want to try to put points on the board, but you want to take good quality shots. That's the one time, though, Earl, that a team that has so many few team fouls that actually can hurt you when you just start fouling late yeah. in the game. It's a rare situation. And now it's into Deshaun Ray Black, and let's see if Rick Stansberry wants him to foul. It looks like he's yelling some instructions maybe to do so, but they have not done it yet. They're gonna play straight defense here. Here's McFowley down the lane. Oh, and he gets it stripped. It'll stay Titans ball though, buck 22. Titans by seven. Earl, this first Seven, eight, nine minutes of the first half or the second half saw eight lead changes at 15 and all and the score tied nine times. But the Titans over this last seven minute stretch plus really established their will on that 21 to 10 well, you run. See McFarley right here got the lane to get to the basket. He was fortunate. He got a hand in there, uh, Howard, and knocked that ball away. Okay. They're gonna referees are gonna come over here. Lamont Simpson, John Floyd, Edward Phillips, the crew looking at the replay to see uh, exactly who that ball went off of. Titans led by McFowley's 22-19 for Jaleel Hogan. 14 for Corey Allen, the freshman from MC12 for Chris Jenkins, who's over his season average. So they're taking a look at the play here. Well, it looks like McFally. it was de deflected by uh, Western Kentucky. They're trying to see if it was off of his knee, or off his legs, but I think that may be Titans basketball. Let's see what they say. Remember, under two minutes, all plays can be reviewed. Yeah. Inbounds, out of bounds, and it's... Well, they're pointing in the Titans' direction, so I think that uh, that ball was slapped out of bounds by Howard. He knocked it out of bounds, but, you know, it's th th a good thing they can come over and review yeah, things. Yeah, you like they, the review, they're Earl? Making sure that they, you know, they got the call right, especially down near the end of ball games with a minute, two minutes left in the ball game, and you can...
you got the right call. How many possessions do you think they would have saved uh, you during your career if they were able to some late, <laughs> late inbounds plays? <laughs> I might have got caught a lot, holding, <laughs> grabbing, scratching. No, no, you're too good for that. Here's Corey Allen, 10 on the shot clock, Titans by seven, big possession here for both teams. Allen down the lane, fires it up. He will draw the foul and go to the free throw line and make a couple free throws here. It's a full three possession game for Corey Allen, who's been splendid in the second half, three of five from downtown, 14 points in all. Well, I like the way they're looking to attack the basket right now, not selling to take the long jump shots. Those long shots can lead to easy baskets on the other end. They're looking to get inside and get themselves some second opportunities or to get fouled, and it's working out fine for them right now in this game. Eichler out, and Blackshear about to come back in. Coach Alexander giving instructions to his troops for his free throw. Good for Allen. Allen, a 78% free throw shooter on the season and so far today two of three so long back in hogan to the bench blackshear jenkins mcfowley and allen will round out the titans five with a buck 09 left here and an eight point lead the titans with a free throw make here by allen can match their largest of the game at nine hilltoppers have led by as many as six for the titans in the midst of a 23 to 10 run in the last seven plus minutes. Well, Eisler giving him some solid minutes, and you see Blackshear back in the game, but he's got to be pleased with the minutes that he got out of Eisler here this afternoon at Callahan. It's got to be a nothing but threes, you would think, here for the Hilltoppers under a minute to go now. Uh, in the lane, though, it's a block and a foul. I think they're going to call that on long as Johnson got free there for a minute. And we got a replay here on well, this. You see, see the penetration of him getting to the basket. Doing a good job, Johnson down there, using his body, making sure that he gets the contact, and he was able to draw the foul that time. Uh, you want to think this Western Kentucky team may be a little bit fatigued now. I mean, they, only, they only traveled, what, <laughs> seven straight road games? 10,000 10, miles. miles. They were at St. Mary's 10, a few days miles, ago. So. I wouldn't mind being in California right you know, now, that's and, for sure. And it could be a long road, too, especially when you're only able to come up with one win uh, being on the road like that. So. Oh, yeah. Very tough for this yeah. Hilltoppers team that has a, yeah. a great coach of Rick Stansbury in his first year, but a lot of turnovers. Johnson makes the free throws. Only three players back from the semifinal conference USA team. Oh, and Deshaun Ray Black gets nailed in the face by Lamamba. And that's going to be yeah. his uh, second foul on the team's fifth. So the fouls are now piling up for Western Kentucky, but maybe a little too late. Well, like you said, they got time to give them, and they got a lot of them to give right yeah. now. And it's coming to, coming to their advantage that they're able to do that. So yeah. the Titans, Titans got to be careful. To, Make sure they're strong with the basketball. Let's see, they foul again here. They're going to have to do something, and they do. As Black almost knocks over our broadcast equipment, <laughs> which would have been okay because he's hustling for the ball there. 83-75, one more, and the Titans will be in the bonus, or the Hilltoppers will be in the bonus. Well, the key is to be strong with the basketball, not turn it over. All right, now that is that seventh foul, so it'll be a one-and-one one situation for Deshaun Ray Black. And you make a couple sets of free throws here, Earl, that's going to be enough. It's 49 seconds left, and it's an eight-point game. One more point for a full three-possession game. Black doing a good job of holding on to that basketball and not turning it over. Good job, able to get to the free throw line. Just a 62% free throw shooter on the season. He has not taken one yet today. First is up, and it's off the front end. So there's a small break for Western Kentucky. They're still down by eight. They're going to go for twos instead of threes. I'm a little surprised with that. Huh. Maybe they're going to play to the Titans' weakness of the free throw line. A little too easy right there. You got to get inside, cut the paint off, not allow him to get to the basket that easy. It's also never easy here at Callahan early. Yeah. Uh, how many <laughs> games have come down to the wire where it looked like it was over or the Titans looked like they were done and found a way back late. Uh, we do have a full timeout, so we'll take it with them. Titans trail by six with 42 seconds left. Actually, we're going to stay right here because that's the way we do it at Callahan Hall. <laughs> and Earl, while I got a second here, we were both on double duty today. I'm headed to Joe Lewis Arena for uh, the Wings game and a, a radio show. You're going to call a Pistons game tonight. Oh, yeah, Indiana's coming in. The Pacers will be in tonight. I'm going to fill in for Rock and Rick Mahorn tonight, and I'll go down, and uh, they, that should be an exciting contest. If, you know, the Pistons uh, – didn't do too well against Washington, but I'm sure they're going to bounce back tonight against uh, the Indiana Pacers. That's amazing, Earl. They're just a couple games out of the top four seeds in the East, mm -hmm. but, you know, have been struggling as of late. I, I think this team is ready for some kind of a run, and maybe they'll start it tonight with a tough Pacers team. Well, I'll tell you what, they've done a great job, you know, throughout the season with Reggie Jackson, their, their lead point guard, being out uh, for a majority of this season, just getting his legs up under him now. and. Uh, you know, Ish Smith came in and did a fabulous job, and they're right where they want to be at. They, have, you know, they have to continue to 
to keep playing and let Reggie get his legs back up and then they got a chance to make a run for this playoff again this year. All right, so you stream my game and I'll stream your game. We'll have, we'll have two <laughs> streams going on, but it's an honor to be here with you as always. And nothing, I can't wish you happy holidays early. Uh, it's my there. pleasure to, to do it with you, Dan. All, always exciting, always entertaining every time I, I hook up with you. Well, let's see if the Titans can make it entertaining at the end for their fans. They've done it so far in the second half. Well, 40 minutes of basketball is what we talked about. Right now, it comes down to 42 seconds of solid basketball for the Titans. Detroit looking for their 84th win in their last 105 home games against non-conference schools. Here's Jenkins running the baseline, gets it into Allen. And now Cole Longs, the Titans break it. They don't let the pressure get to them. And well, no foul call there. It looked like there was a big reach in by Howard. Howard didn't know what to do there. And now you got the foul call that time. Mm -hmm. On just into the game is Ed Carter the third for the first time today. So Ed Carter the third, uh, you know, chilly off the bench is going to go to the free throw. Line. Well, they got him in there for free throw purposes. That's just the reason why uh, Coach Alexander put him in. You know that he would go to the free throw line. He know he could knock him down. He didn't like what he saw out of Black at the free throw line last time. Well, he is perfect on the season. He's four of four, so he's, he's hitting yeah. a thousand percent so far. <laughs> so, and he's also a good shooter. Yep. Titans by six, 30 seconds to go. One plus the bonus for Ed Carter the third. First is up and no good. And we jinxed him, as usual. Yep, it's that ratty announcer's jinx. Triple by Johnson. Short, that could have made things really interesting. But Pancake Thomas gets it back. Now Howard wants a three, and that's too strong. Rebound again, Lamova puts it up and in. And another timeout, so 16.9 left. They got three cracks at it that time. And the Titans up by four now. 83 to 79 so it really is about getting the ball in getting the foul called on western kentucky and, and making a couple free throws and that could that should do it but you know with 16.9 left throw that's a lot more time than some might realize well that just show you how important it is at the free throw line it's the difference between winning and losing basketball games when you get the opportunities to get to the free throw line you got to be able to knock those down and right now that becomes crucial uh, for the titans and it same situation again. I'm almost sure that you know they'll foul here in this situation and put them back at the free throw line. Titans not a bad day from the line. Uh, they missed two of their last three, but seven to twelve from the free throw line. Team that shoots 62 percent on the season. That's over their average. Western Kentucky conversely nine of twelve from the free throw line. So let's see what Detroit does here. McFally, Ed Carter the third, Corey Allen, Jenkins, and Cole Long in for Detroit. And you would think they were going to try to get this ball either to Corey Allen or EC3. Two better free throw, two best free throw shooters on the court right now. 16.9 left this game, still not over. And he gets it into McFally and a quick foul there. So Josh McFally working on a 22-point uh, afternoon, 8 of 14 from the field, 6 of 9 from downtown. But Earl, he's yet to take a free throw. Yeah, and he's had, had his struggles at the free throw line uh, throughout the year, uh, knocking down free throws. And, uh, Hopefully that uh, he can he can find a range here on the, on these free throws. Yep, 75 percent on the season, way better than last year, where he especially late in the season really struggled for the free throw line. He really worked on that during the off season. So McFally will now get one plus the bonus, one more foul on Western Kentucky, and it's the double bonus for Detroit. And the first is up and no yeah. good. Oh, here we go, back the other way, and it's picked off by McFally. Here's Long up to McFally. McFally off to the races and up and in and makes it a six point game. And that should just about do it and break the nine game losing streak. Rick Stansberry can't believe it. And yep, that will be the last shot. And the Titans break the losing streak, Earl. They haven't won since November 11th. And like I said, when you haven't won in that long, it just tastes that much sweeter. No, no question about it. And it's exciting. Like, and like I said, against non conference teams, these Titans always do a great job um, protecting their home court. And once again, they stepped up to it, you know, to get that first Division One win, as you mentioned, against a, you know, Western Kentucky basketball team. Exciting game here uh, tonight, and a lot of different people for the Titans were able to step up to help them become victorious here this afternoon at Callahan Hall. Yep, Titans led by 24 from Josh McFowley, 19 from Jaleel Hogan, 16 Corey Allen, 12 from Chris Jenkins, eight points from Gerald Blackshear, some solid defensive minutes, four points from Cole Long. It's a big minutes late, and two points from Malik Eichler. What a day for Hogan. What a day for the Titans downtown. And, you know, Western Kentucky, they were a game team. They've been on the road forever. 10,000 miles, seven straight games. Got 21 from Q Johnson, 15 from Justin Johnson, and 11 each from Lamoba and Pancake Thomas. They'll be a team that will be able to fight in the Conference USA League as well. No, no question. This is definitely going to help them, uh, you know, going forward. Um, you know, they, 
being out on the road 29 days away from home and I'm sure they're going to have a nice little home stand where they'll be able to go back and play. But this is huge right here for our Titans confidence builder right now before you know they got Fort Wayne coming in and then we get right off into conference play. You know, we'll 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 see uh, Northern Kentucky coming in here. You know, right before the end of this month. So Earl, how do you keep this going? And it's a you know, Bakari Alexander mentioned us before the game. He's knocked this season down to three ten-game stanzas. First one did go so well, one and nine. But they start the second one with the win, as you mentioned, one more game non-conference. Then the real season starts. How do you keep this going, even though it's a one game at a time? Well, your non-conference games are the games that you want to get prepared for, getting ready for the Horizon League to get started. Now they had some tough games out here now, but they, you know, they still can come back. And this is when you want to be on top of your ball game when you ride get into the Horizon League, and you'll see Northern Kentucky coming in here for the first Horizon League conference game. And I think they'll be ready to match up and do well in the Horizon League. I think you saw a, a true team effort in the second half, whether it was Corey Allen draining threes, McFowley draining threes, Jaleel Hogan in the post, Cole Long playing good defensive minutes. How can that carry over when you have a whole well, team it, effort? It was solid, you know, even though it was un, you know, unfortunate that, you know, Jaleel didn't start the game right. tonight, but I mean, it worked to their advantage. I mean, he was down the stretch, he was there for them, and, you know, they got a chance to utilize Eisler tonight. He came in the game, Blackshear, solid game. You got performances from a lot of different people tonight, and that's what they're gonna need. They need everybody to- It isn't always easy to know where you stand financially. Multiple accounts, investments, insurance. At Northwestern Mutual, we help you see your whole picture, find out what you truly want, and we design a plan to go get it. We help you live life differently. It's okay. Shh. Shh. Aí Pedro, preciso de você na caixa, Davi, ajuda ele. Mas eu não te dizer, mas ele não já, não é? 